Hi, I'm Meng Jia Yan from MIT. I will present cache telepathy, leveraging shared resource attacks to learn DNN architectures. This work is done with Professor Chris Fletcher and Professor Joseph Trillas from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. This paper proposes a deep neural network privacy attack. DNN model extraction attack generally involves first to steal the DNN architecture and second to retrain a model using the stolen architecture. So what is the architecture of a deep neural network? Intuitively, the architecture gives the shape of a deep neural network. More specifically, it defines the number of layers of a neural network, the type of each layer, for each layer, it also specifies the hyperparameters such as the number of neurons, the number of filters, and the filter sizes, etc. However, stealing DNN's architecture is challenging, mainly because DNNs have a multitude of hyperparameters. This paper presents cache telepathy. Cache telepathy uses cache-based side channel attacks to efficiently recover DNN architectures. To show how cache telepathy works, let's start from the background. DNNs are widely used for many applications nowadays, including image recognition and healthcare data analysis. Machine learning as a service is a popular framework that can provide end-to-end -end infrastructures for users to write machine learning code and deploy machine learning tasks. The general use case is, the cloud providers host the model and allow remote to untrusted users to private the model for a fee. However, from the security perspective, machine learning as a service provides new ways to breach the, the privacy of the hosted DNNs. Machine learning as a service wraps the Oracle model and only exposes the query APIs to untrusted users However, model extraction attacks can use the standard query APIs to learn details of the black box model. It trains a substitute model that works the same as a black box model. Moreover, model extraction attacks can be the stepping stone for many other machine learning attacks, such as membership inference attacks, training parameter stealing attacks, and so on. Well, to make model extraction attack work, one needs to steal the DNN architecture first. Let's take a deeper look at DNN architectures. A DNN architecture specifies the number of layers of the DNN and the type for each layer, whether it is a fully connected layer or a convolutional layer or a pooling layer. For different types of layers, it specifies different hyperparameters. For a fully connected layer, it specifies the number of neurons for that layer. For a convolutional layer, the filter size and the number of filters. In addition, it also specifies the connection between two layers. For example, a VGG16 has 16 layers with a mixture of convolutional and fully connected layers. Those fully co convolutional layers operate on very different filter sizes and number of filters. Given 16 layers, there could be five trillion possible architectures, and a VGG16 is just a one of them. Given the intractable search space, it is unfeasible to obtain the architecture via brute force search or guess. As another example, we show a ResNet module with five layers here. Those layers are not sequentially connected. There exists a so-called shortcut connection from the top to the bottom of the module. The non-sequential connection further complicates the reverse engineering process. Overall, comparing to most of the prior side channel attack, that, ext that extract just the key for crypto algorithm, cache telepathy needs to extract a multitude of complicated parameters. In this paper, we have made the following contributions. Cache telepathy can substantially reduce the search space of DNN architectures. For example, when attacking VGG16, we can reduce the search space from five trillions to just 16 architectures. Cache telepathy is based on the following insights. First, we identified that DNN inference relies heavily on blocked matrix multiplication, we call it a jam. Second, we, we, we provide a detailed security analysis of blocked jam implementation. Finally, we use cache-based side channel attacks, both flash reload and prime probe, to extract the jam matrix parameters and reconstruct DNN architectures. Note that, 
the observations we have made in this paper apply to various machine learning frameworks and the state-of-the-art BLOS libraries that implement BlockTheGen. Therefore, cache telepathy is general enough to work on most machine learning platforms. To describe the mapping relationship between DNN architectures and the matrix parameters, I will use a fully connected layer as an example. In a fully connected layer, each output neuron is connected to all the uh, input neurons. How to compute output? Each output neuron is computed by first multiplying each input neuron with the corresponding weight on the edge between the input and output neurons. And the second, adding up those products. The computation basically involves many multiply and add operations. These multiply and add operations can be implemented as matrix multiplication. We can write the input neurons as a vector. The length uh, of the vector is the number of neurons at the current layer. And generally, the computation of a fully connected DNN is performed over a batch of a few inputs at a time. So we can get multiple such vectors and stack them together into a matrix. This is our input matrix. We can organize all the weights as a matrix too. The weights for one output neuron are gathered as a column. Therefore, the number of columns in the weight matrix is equal to the number of neurons at the next layer. With this, we have mapped the computation of fully connected layers as a matrix multiplication. We can summarize the mapping relationship in this, in this table. Since the computation of each layer triggers exactly one gem call, so the number of layers equals the number of gem calls. And as we analyzed, the number of neurons at each layer equals the number of columns in the input matrix. You can apply the similar but slightly more complicated analysis to derive the mapping relationship for convolutional layers and pooling layers. We would encourage you to refer to the paper for more details. Let's consider how to attack blocked matrix then. Blocked, mat blocked gem is aggressively optimized for multi-level caches using GoTo's algorithm. More specifically, blocked gem is implemented as nested loops. Each iteration of a loop handles one block on a certain dimension, so we can use cache-based sidechain attack to track the execution of the loops, count the number of iterations for each loop, and infer the number of blocks for each dimension. Here is how the block gem works. In order to multiply uh, n by k matrix A and k by n matrix B, the algorithm tries to use a microkernel on the P by Q block and the Q by R block. This microkernel is generally written in assembly code. The block sizes are picked so that the P by, y, the, the P by Q block fits in the L2 cache and the Q by R block fits in the L3 cache. Note that the P, Q, R, and on row, which you will see shortly, are block sizes. They are either public or can be reverse engineered. The nested loop is implemented as follows. The algorithm first divides matrix B into multiple K by R blocks. It corresponds to the outermost loop, we call it loop one. Then it further divides matrix A into multiple N by Q blocks and further divides each block in matrix B into Q by R subblocks. This corresponds to the code of loop two. Moreover, it further divides each block in matrix A into P by Q subblocks. Now we have the right size for the microkernel. Before every invocation of the microkernel, the algorithm packs data from matrix A and matrix B into the two buffers for better locality. Thus, loop three consists of two parts. In the first part, the first subblock in matrix A is copied to buffer A. Then the subblock in matrix B is copied to buffer B in the units of Q by on row subblocks. Each copy operation is immediately followed by a computation operation. This corresponds to loop four. Next, the algorithm packs the rest of subblocks in matrix A to update buffer A and reuse the data in buffer B for the microkernel. These operations correspond to the rest iterations of loop three. 
We can extract matrix parameters by counting the iterations of the four loops as analyzed. And how to count the iterations? We can identify the dynamic call graphs, DCG, for the three functions highlighted in the code snippet. That is IT copy, ON copy, kernel. The invocation of functions will follow the pattern as shown in this DCG. The number of pairs of consecutive invocations of the ON copy and kernel functions equals the number of iterations for loop four. And similarly, the number of pairs of consecutive invocations of the IT copy and kernel functions equals the number of iterations of loop three minus one. And the number of occurrences of such a pattern equals the product of iteration one and iteration two. Therefore, we can use side channel attack to monitor addresses in the three functions to determine the number of iterations. Note that OpenBLAS and Intel MKL both follow this DCG, meaning that our approach is applicable to both of these two libraries. Let's briefly go through the evaluation results. We use cache-based side-channel attack to uh, extract matrix parameters. Next, we can use the matrix parameters to reconstruct the DN architectures. We evaluate cache telepathy on ResNet 50 and VGG 16. You can see that without cache telepathy, the search space is intractable. Using cache telepathy, most time, we can significantly reduce the source space to a reasonable size. Outlier exists when using Prime Pro to attack MKL-based ResNet 50. We provided a detailed, a detailed explanation in the paper. To conclude, the takeaway messages from this paper is that cache-based side channel attacks can be used to efficiently recover DNN architectures. DN architectures, even though have a multitude of parameters, these parameters are all mapped to the JAM parameters. And the state-of-the-art blocked JAM implementation can leak matrix parameters via cache access pattern. 